Why was a commission of this sort, the Commission on the Administration of Law and Justice, a good thing to put together? Well, first and foremost, we have 10 million North Carolinians who utilize the court system. Uh, it may not be that we're in the courts regularly, but we benefit from a court system that handles criminal and civil cases appropriately. So what we see is about every generation or so, uh, we have to come in and study a system and really assess what's working well, what's not working well. So in North Carolina history, we had a commission known as the Bell Commission that started in the 1950s and then finished its work in the 1960s. And we have some amazing accomplishments. We ended up with a, a unified court system, which replaced uh, kind of a hodgepodge of municipal courts, where you might have the same infraction in Asheville and Raleigh, but radically different process and procedures and even outcomes. And so from the Bell Commission, we were able to achieve a unified system. We also were able to achieve a court of appeals during that time because we realized that one Supreme Court was not able to handle the caseload of a state that was rapidly increasing in population and in the number of civil and criminal cases. So we come into the 1990s and we have a commission known as the Medlin Commission. And the Medlin Commission acknowledged that which we still know, and that is that our courts were woefully behind from a technology perspective. And so that brought us to the point at which I thought we should evaluate the system again to make sure that the outcome in these courtrooms represents the truth and represents justice and represents a uniform outcome across the state. We're a very diverse state. We have, uh, we have the eastern seaboard. We have the Piedmont. We have the western part of the state. We have 100 counties. And it's so important to make sure if we have the same facts, we also have the same outcome in all of these counties. And that's why we felt, among other reasons, why we needed to take a comprehensive look at the system. And this group did, working for more than a year, as we mentioned at the top. As it moved forward, what were some of the top things that came out of the work of this group? Well, we, uh, we realized that we had a lot of work to do on the technology front. And so one of the chief uh, strategies that we'll be implementing now is known as the eCourts Strategic Technology Plan. And this is going to make sure that we have a comprehensive e-filing system not only for our appellate courts, which has been in place for some time, but also for our trial courts that are in 100 counties and that process almost 3 million cases a year. And this system will make uh, all documents e-accessible to every citizen 24-7. And so it's a very important project for us. We're also looking at ways to make uh, the system work better for minor juvenile offenses. And we have legislation in this session of the General Assembly that directly flowed from the work of the Commission to ensure that for uh, nonviolent offenses that these are handled in the juvenile court where we can have whole family treatment, so to speak, and turn around as many young people as possible to become contributed members of the, econ the economy and the, and the global marketplace. One of the things I heard in your discussion about some of the changes that are being made is that it would be better for this court system to be operating a little bit more uh, like the way that people operate in the rest of their lives, using technology better to simplify things so you don't have to go and physically fill out forms, have to park at a parking space, stand in a line, but you could do as much as you can on uh, on your computer and get things done that way. Absolutely. Uh, we have national survey data, which shows that 76% of Americans would like more court resources available online, and that number skyrockets to 86% if we consider citizens under 40. And so I think if you look at uh, the private sector, Amazon and other providers, you have this wonderful online experience in many respects, and then you come to the courts and you're dealing with first generation technology. So we'd like to uh, modernize and update, so to speak, our, our systems so people can have that same 24 seven type accessibility. And it may be in many situations, they will not even have to go to a courthouse, but can transact business online. If we do nothing and the courts operate as they have, what kinds of 
problems or challenges is that going to create long term? If we just say, ah, the courts are doing fine, we don't need to make these investments or make these changes. Well, I want you to consider the fact that each year uh, we create uh, another thirty million dollar or thirty million. Uh, documents that we are having to store. So to do nothing actually means increasing expense as we have to secure additional facilities to warehouse all these expando files uh, of materials that have to be put somewhere. So to do nothing means that the courts would continue to fall behind to a point where they would really have no technology uh, relationship to the rest of society. And so as we've seen the private sector and other parts of government move forward in this area, there would be an increasing disparity. And I think uh, citizens would look at the courts and would say, what is wrong? How come we can't have accessibility to online resources, online di disposition of minor offenses, etc.? So I think it's, it's, the imperative is to, to accept this challenge and to try to uh, to basically take the steps we need to, to, in, in a sense, catch up to where other institutions are at this point in time. Your report, or the report of the group, came out in March. What's the response been of people uh, who are going to be making these decisions within state government, within the General Assembly, uh, said, you know, this, this makes sense, we do need to do something about these things? I think the uh, response has been very positive, and there there have been some favorites. Uh, the Raise the Age uh, legislation is supported by 70 percent of North Carolinians, according to the latest Civitas poll, and uh, also the e-filing plan. Uh, we're receiving a lot of good feedback from uh, not only those who work in the legal system, but those who also be the beneficiaries of greater openness and transparency of all court operations. And also the civics education uh, recommendations have uh, also been uh, praised by many. Uh, we live at a time, according to recent polling data, where only 26% of Americans can name th all three branches of government, and 31%, according to a recent poll, cannot name any branch of government. So we also need work to make sure that the people of this state and country are aware of the fact that in a, in a republic, we are the government and we have to know how government works so we can be effective in our role as citizens. Our time remaining is short, but if people would like to learn more, including many more of the details about this report that uh, was put together after 15 months of work, the North Carolina Commission on the Administration of Law and Justice, how would they find that information? Well, I'm pleased to share that we're trying to practice what we preach, and this, uh, this document, the report and recommendation, is accessible online, and they need only go to www nccalj.org. So again, that's www.nccalj.org.